Joining Dr. Kipnyatich on this stage uh, is, uh, and, and it's because he, do, he does not need any more introduction, he is a seasoned executive with a track record of contributing to the achievement of corporate turnarounds and business growth objectives through providing business support, strategic direction, uh, diverse perspectives and positive leadership. His name is Cromwell Kedemi of United Bank of Africa and is currently the director of retail banking uh, and pr prior to that, he held a post at uh, National Bank of Kenya, KCB, and Barclays Bank. What you don't know about him that I came to learn is that he also breeds and sells dogs. Okay, so uh, if you are looking for a Labrador, he's selling me a female so that I can breed them so you come and buy from me later. Is that clear? <laughs> All right, I'd also like to introduce on this stage a seasoned risk management professional with the public sector in Kenya, a member of the SAT Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Kenya, and he's proficient in the following things. Enterprise risk management, compliance checking, information systems audit, business continuity planning, performance contracting. He's a lead auditor for ISO 9001, 2008. He's an investment manager, financial audit systems integration support. Uh, he's proficient in internal controls assessment, project planning and management, business processes improvement, and he works for CPF Financial Services. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for my friend, Sos Peter Thiga. And last, but not definitely not least, is Mr. Pius Moshiri. Is it Pius or Pius? Pius. It depends on whether I went to primary or primary, <laughs> or, or group of schools. Clearly, uh, you are not in primary like Ken and I were in yesterday. He's the founding CEO of Nabo Capital, and his passion is, in, is to connect investors to lucrative opportunities across Africa. With more than 15 years' experience in successfully investing in Africa, Pius has overseen investment transactions in the excess of $500 million and investment returns in excess of $82 million. Leveraging on his wide networks, he has helped reputable institutional clients from the US, Europe, Asia, and Africa to acquire sizable stakes and break into top 10 shareholder lists on some of the most coveted blue chip companies on the continent. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause to Pius Moshiri. And to moderate this panel, which is discussing protecting and securing your business positions, maximizing the benefits of mainstream solutions, is our host, the founder of Sandbox, Mr. Joram Inamu Karibu Bora Joram. Thank you. Thank you very much. I was a bit worried about having an all-male panel until I looked at the program and realized there's an all-female at 2.40. So that made me a bit comfortable that we are even. <laughs> okay, um, and I will begin with a question. To be honest, SMEs fear big businesses. In fact, I'm sure they hear all these four names and they're like, what are big businesses coming to tell us? And that's exactly why we have you here. And the topic is really about securing positions. Um, some people may not know what your organizations do, uh, and the key question through all this is, are your organizations really thinking about SMEs? Have they been responsive to SMEs? You know, are we looking at a future where things are going to change? I think I've interacted with some of you to know that there's things going in that direction. So maybe uh, starting with Julius, um, you run an insurance company, <laughs> a group actually, insurance group, the, the largest in Kenya and I think in East Africa as well. Um, are you thinking about SMEs and what are you thinking about them in terms of helping them maximize the benefits of what someone like Jubilee has to offer for them as a business? Okay, thank you very much. I think, uh, I think you started off saying big companies sometimes are blind to some of the realities. Jubilee is 85 years old this year, and it is largely a corporate insurance company. But in the last five years, we have started thinking different. And we are saying we must reach out to the small guy, because tomorrow we want them also to be 85 years old and successful. So therefore, that's why we are here, we have a tent, and we are reaching out 
but we have used our experience in the corporate world to then transfer some of those skills to you. So we are here, to, we manage risk. Insurance companies manage risk, and so therefore we understand risk management pretty well, and we want to guide you in managing that risk. For example, the greatest risk that you have as an SME is if something wrong happens to you, for a medical problem, and you don't have the money, you will then draw money from your business. A small investment in insurance will manage that risk for you. And as I, I talk about leadership, you have a succession system, so that then in case you are not there, there are other people who can step in. So we are going to use our own global experience, our experience as a large company, and we share it with you. As a small company, you pick the things which are relevant for you, and so therefore, you begin to grow. Because growth is also coming in stages. And I would like you to, we have a book that about 85 years of Jubilee. It was written when we were eight years old. And it, it can give you some snippets, some tips on how to survive 85 years. Because when it started in 1937, it was an SME. It was a small business. And look at what it has become. So don't fear. Learn from giants. Step on, I mean, step on their shoulders and then grow bigger than them. I think that will be my message, Jerome. Yeah. And I think every time I've talked to you, you always talk about, you know, that growth. Um, don't get surprised when we call him Kip. He always insists everyone call him Kip, <laughs> even if he's Dr. Kip Ngatich. And I remember a story you told us of how it took you, was it a year, to convince a certain building society <laughs> to, you know, think big and, uh, you know, accept external capital. And today they happen to be, I think, the largest it's bank the largest in the region. Bank. Yeah, and you sat on that board. And so I think every time he talks about growth, his conviction is that he's seen, you know, people grow from small to multinational. And having been part of a journey, I think that's what gives you a passion for, for SMEs growing in this region. How many people here have a pension, uh, SMEs? Please put up your hand. <laughs> Someone is asking what is a pension. Anyone At the pension in thinking evening. pension? OK. No hand has gone up. So, Peter, you're in trouble. Yeah, from CPF Financial Services. Your organization is all about, you know, pension management and thinking about the future. Is there anything for SMEs really that you are thinking about and, you know, what would you tell people here to begin thinking about as you've seen no hand went up, which makes me also a bit worried because mine didn't go up either. <laughs> well, thank you, Joram. Um, interesting. I hope I'll convert the entire room uh, after this morning session. So let me talk a little bit about CPF. Um, CPF is a financial services company, very well established uh, in Kenya. Um, and yes, we do a little bit more than pension, but today we'll be focusing on pensions. Uh, under our umbrella, we have about six pension funds that we manage, uh, and our valuation about 60 billion. Talk about uh, big businesses, but that shouldn't uh, intimidate anybody. Uh, and our membership at around 100,000. The other areas of concern, we deal with is renewable energy, uh, ICT, property, insurance, and all of them are outgrowths from the core business, which is pension. As many of you may know, pensions is all about investing the money that we receive from our members. So we invest in property and renewable energy and insurance and the like. But also we take time to do a lot of consultancy and training to educate the public on why they should uh, be on a pension um, fund or be on a pension scheme. Um, should we think about pension? I think we should all be thinking about pension. Uh, perhaps some of the myths uh, that surround pension, and when you think about pension, what, what comes to mind? Personally, I think about my, my father who's in the village, eh? old and retired. I don't know whether you think about the same. I can see people whispering to each other. So, 
uh, at the back of our minds, we've relegated pension because we think it's about old people, but we forget that life is a journey. We are all headed there. And in fact, with the current um, state of things in, in the country, the life expectancy keeps going up. I don't know whether you're aware of that. So it means when you get there, you're likely to live longer than your grandparents or other people who preceded you. So the question is, what kind of a life do you want to live thereafter when you are less productive, because this is your productive uh, stage, and when you can no longer engage in you know, business as you used to? So yes, you should think about a pension. And uh, let me just, because somebody asked, what is a pension? Really, pension is just whatever you set aside for your old age when you're no longer as productive as you used to be. Okay, there's a limitation in terms of age. Government defines it at 60. You're an entrepreneur, so you can define it, what, at 70 or any year above that. Uh, so pension is anything that you set aside. It doesn't have to be in a pension fund, per se, but as provided you've set aside something that will take care of you when you are no longer able to engage in a lot of productive uh, activities. So. I'll be talking a little bit more about it, and uh, I, as well as others, we have a booth there where we can engage and give you some of the practical ideas that you can implement to prepare yourself as an entrepreneur uh, for the life after, uh, uh, thereafter. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, Pius, I think you come from a company that is an offshoot of something that has grown significantly in value but now you are the position where you deploy that capital to help others grow significantly in value. And we are talking about you know, people here leveraging on mainstream solutions. What does Nabo Capital do? And you, know, you have SMEs here. Uh, what could they look forward to uh, if you know, they're able to grow to what it is that you have to offer? Thank you. Thank you, Joram. Uh, Nabo Capital is a, is a subsidiary of Centum Group. And by the way, Centum also began as an SME in 19, 1967 uh, with the blessings of uh, the then the president, uh, Jomo Kenyatta, the late Jomo Kenyatta, uh, who asked a few elite Kenyans to go around and mobilize capital. And they were able to raise $26,000. And from that $26,000 emerged this uh, great brand of Kenya. Uh, and I know quite a number of SMEs, uh, that's the money they have probably in the bank. So do not uh, despise your humble, your humble beginnings. Every big business begins as an SME. Maybe I can even say as a micro SME. Mm -hmm. So uh, Nabo Capital is a fund management business and uh, we help, or rather we're in the business of helping people and institutions to create multi-generational wealth. And uh, you know, when you, were, when you were growing up, and maybe even until now, uh, we used to say, what is the backbone of our economy? What do we say the backbone of our economy is? Agriculture. Yeah? Agriculture. Agriculture. Yeah. <laughs> there are 7.41 million micro SMEs in our country. And uh, I think it is time we start changing that narrative. The backbone of our economy is the micro SMEs. Mm -hmm. uh, and that also touches on agriculture. Uh, so if we focus on that, uh, or rather businesses that fail to focus on that, I think they will regret. Uh, I remember about 10 years ago, uh, my group CEO was going to give a a strategic talk somewhere to one of the banks. And he asked me, Pius, you're the one who knows about banks. Uh, what do I go and tell these people? And I told them, I'll give you some key messages. And I went back from that point 10 years backwards. And uh, I was very surprised that the multinational banks, uh, which was Barclays and Sanchat, were the number one largest banks in this country in all metrics, number one and number two. Ten years later, they were, tier, they were middle tier banks overtaken by KCB and equity. And what really shifted is that uh, these banks were formed to, 
with, with a target of multinational corporations, but there was this rise in local businesses which they were missing and also the, re the retail market. And today, that, is, uh, that has become a big target. So we are here because SMEs are very core to this country and even to the existence of our big businesses going forward. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a bank in the room, <laughs> UBA, uh, Cromwell. Um, I think every time we talk banking as SMEs, the question is always, you know, as soon as I'm done asking for whatever money, you'll ask for collateral. <laughs> Does that continue to be the scenario, or is there more that people like UBA are looking at to develop and engage with SMEs and help them in their journey of growth? Uh, thank you, Joram. Um, a good question. Over the years as banks, we've tried to box SMEs and micros into what we thought is the best product for them. And, and to some level of success, but the reality is that the 7.9 million guys are not banking with UBA today. So we've asked ourselves, how then can we speak into this space? Because many of the SMEs who come into our spaces have great ideas, but have issues around what Julius was talking about earlier in terms of how they run their businesses. So in UBA Kenya, what we've done differently is when we came into this market 13 years ago, we positioned UBA Kenya as a corporate bank. But we know we can count the number of corporates in this nation. And this year, we've changed that strategy and said we'll do retail and we'll emphasize SME. How are we going to do it differently? We will get involved in making sure that we help them build their businesses right. That's why we've partnered with, with, with Sandbox. And we are saying the ex expertise we have in running businesses as bankers, they have better than us. So we will partner with them in training their customers. We are, the other thing we are doing with Sandbox is also reviewing our products and asking ourselves how can we review our products and be relevant to the market. I'm a banker, yes, I breed dogs, I import dogs from Poland. This year I'll import dogs from Germany, breed and sell. But until I started breeding and selling dogs, that's when I began to understand the journey for the SME is different from how we view it in the bank. And we're deliberately looking at how we can speak to them. So we are reviewing our products, we're looking for greater partnerships, but more importantly, opening the pan African group for our customers, asking ourselves, can you sell your product in Cote d'Ivoire, in Liberia, in Congo? How do we open that market for you? And there are platforms that we are creating to make sure that you can showcase your products in those places. And in addition also, is then also see places, other places you can seek your product, I mean, seek, um, uh, seek your supplies from other than rely on the traditional species. So an, an exciting place and I'm looking forward to walking this journey. My boss was here yesterday. This is something that we're deliberately looking to grow. Thank okay. you very much. Yeah. I, I think what I'm constantly hearing uh, from the four of you is that one, you're ready to listen uh, to the SMEs. Please talk to them during the breaks. Tell them what it is that works for you and what doesn't. Uh, I think when they hear it from the SMEs themselves, um, you know, it will have an impact in shaping their journey as they think of, of the products going forward. We don't have too much time, but I think when a lot of SMEs also think large businesses and they think, if I'm to get insurance, I probably need to set aside, I don't know, 200,000 shillings to get a policy, you know, to just get started. If I'm to think investment, I need to have at least, I don't know, 100,000 in savings to get started. Uh, if I'm to think banking, I have to have collateral, you know, if I'm to think pension, I have to, you know, have... So, you know, the, the general tendency is to think we need a lot of money to engage, and that's why we probably even stay away. Uh, are we misinformed about the products and services that you people have for us? Um, is it an education thing? Uh, where, where do we start? Like with Julius, I've seen adverts on SME policies. Is it in those figures I'm talking about? <laughs> okay, I, I think uh, what is missing, Joram, is the baraza. <laughs> it's a conversation, okay? 
all of us have the same intentions. At the corporate level, we want to reach out to SME. We want to talk to you. At your level, you want to talk to me or two. Now, what is missing is the platform. And I think Sandbox has created that platform where the big boys and the not so big boys come together and have a country conversation. I don't mind you know, engaging you, uh, you, you reaching out to me, and we, we discuss, okay? For example, if, if, if you are talking about insurance and a medical policy could be 100,000 and you don't have the 100,000, we are now talking to banks and say, your business is credit, okay? Pay me the 100,000, engage the SME and keep paying pole pole because insurance means you pay upfront. So these conversations need to happen. We are adjusting our organizations internally. Each of our business lines already have a retail and SME uh, department or a function that just deals with SMEs. And we are rolling out all these strategies, reaching out uh, because our mindset was corporate. Similarly, for you, you want to be a part of a supply chain of a multinational. If you look at the companies that are huge multinationals today, Samsung, I've read a lot about South Korea, what they call the chai balls. Samsung, Hyundai, Daewoo, and the rest. All of them were SMEs in the 70s. And the government deliberately linked them up with multinationals. And they told multinationals, we are giving you incentives so that then you can pull these SMEs for us. And government facilitated them. They were incentivized. The only thing government told these, most of them were family businesses, was you must govern them well. That was the condition. In fact, if you remember, I think the, the CEO of Samsung, I think two, three years ago, uh, no, five years ago, misbehaved. And government was very upset and he was sent to jail because he embarrassed the country. Now, today, 30, 40 years later, Samsung is a multinational in their own right. So that is why I was saying a partnership between corporate, SME, and clever government. <laughs> Let me emphasize this. <laughs> so when you go to elections or nine, make sure you elect a clever government. The three of them working together, Kenya can be a great country. And so therefore, let us work together. And I hope, uh, Joram, this is not the last baraza. You mm. probably need more barazas. More barazas. Yes. Yeah, Thank you. Up. Okay. Yeah, I would love to hear from the rest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Piers. <clears throat> the fastest growing segment of our economy is uh, the SMEs, without a doubt. Uh, and the most efficient uh, segment of our economy is still the SMEs. Uh, you see these guys who uh, sell to you, they hawk stuff in traffic in the morning. They know exactly what you need when you're going to work. You've forgotten your charger, they give you a, a charger, you've, you've even forgotten a tie, you can even buy a tie, you know. <laughs> you don't have airtime, you need to call people, they give you airtime. And when you're going home, they also, they, they also have products that match when you're going home. You need fruits, you need, you need uh, grapes. They have this stuff. The same guy who was selling something totally different in the morning is selling something totally different in the evening. Or our organizations, when they grow big, they can't do that. They can't do that. It takes uh, many strategic sessions and, and years and uh, cultural change and organizational behavior those kind of big words, to shift a company from just selling one product to another. Mm -hmm. But these guys in the SMEs are doing it within the day. Uh, they know exactly, when it's now rainy season, they, exact, they have umbrellas. There were, not, there were no umbrellas yesterday. <laughs> so that is what is making our economy tick. And we, as, and I don't like the fact that we are called big businesses, should not grow just big, we should also grow small as we grow big. 
and we must plug into the SMEs, our, our economic model, what he was calling economic engine, must be plugged into the SMEs and support SMEs. Because imagine, 7.41 million businesses if they just doubled their revenues. If they just doubled their revenues. Today they contribute 40% of our GDP. If they just double their revenues, our GDP would become something totally different. Mm. So imagine if the banks were supporting them, if, imagine if the insurance companies were supporting them, imagine if investment companies were supporting them. We were helping you to come up with those leadership structures, those governance structures, everything. Then we set you up for success. Uh, so the point I'm trying to make here is we are trying as fast as possible to adjust ourselves to be able to speak the SME, SME lingo, uh, to come down to that level and not see ourselves as big boys. Mm. But also the SMEs uh, must not shy away to come to us so that we, are to, we, wa we work on these opportunities, opportunities together. Uh, and that way, we can take you to new markets, as my friend has already said here. And that means tripling your revenues. Yeah. And that means something totally different for, right. for, our, for, our, for our business. So uh, on the investment side, we are doing everything. I think uh, uh, we just launched our, um, our most recent product called Chooms, um, which allows investors to invest as little as five shillings. So there is no excuse for not plugging into investment because every business needs to invest and we shall talk about it. Let me pass it on back to you, Joe. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I think, I think just, just to re-echo the thing that has hit home, I've been, I've been banking for, this will be my 31st year in banking. And, and in, in this old age, uh, I don't look it, thank you for the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm realizing, and I was sharing with Joram, is that we've relied on just a few guys to run our SME book you know, in terms of deposit, in terms of lending, to hit our numbers and looked at SMEs in the short term. How do I hit my numbers this quarter? But I think the bolder step that we're taking in UBA is saying, how do we roll down our sleeves and create success stories? And partner with people who can help fill those gaps. As I sat here and listened to Julius, I'm realizing I need to create a board. My wife has been wanting to sit on the board of this maybe be just of my business, probably just to have a, a greater insight on the finances. But, <laughs> <laughs> but how do we create more of this is what I think we must be deliberate about, about in making sure that we create greater success stories. So that hawker, the next time you're meeting him, he probably has other people working for him down on the street as he does something else. For me, that's what I feel is what we must get right. And if you get more of those guys in that space, then we change this economy, change the lives of people, and I think it will be easier for me to hit my numbers. Okay. Mm. So, Svita? Good. Let, let me be a bit practical. I want you to take out your phones, please, for a moment. Go, go to your app store. Please. Type Rukisha. Have you found something called Rukisha on your app store? Oh, that's an iPhone. <laughs> it's yeah. not yet on the iPhone, now on, on the app store there. Have you found anything called Rukisha? Mm -hmm. Now, to make your life easier as far as pension is concerned, you don't have to visit the CPF offices. Register on Rukisha. Now, Rukisha is a brilliant app, just to answer the question that Joram uh, asked earlier on. Number one, you don't have to visit our offices to become a member of a pension scheme. Number two, what we are trying to roll out here is something called subconscious savings. I know one of the biggest challenges as far as pension is concerned is the conflicting priorities that we have on our finances. Pension is at the bottom of your mind. So what we've done with this uh, product is we have allowed you to select, you can use it as a mobile wallet where every time you spend or send money to any other person, you subconsciously save into a pension account. So it will enable you to choose the proportion. Is it 10%, 20%? So every time I'm forwarding 1,000 to anyone, 
uh, is saved into my pension. So that's one of the easiest ways. This is called the individual pension plan, which is allowed by RBA and registered by RBA. So you could check it out um, and begin your pension journey uh, as we had talked earlier on. Thank you. Okay, I'm um, glad we've all learned something new, haven't we? Uh, yeah, so as you're paying for that bill in the bar, you know, sending that money, as you're paying for, you could be contributing to your pension. That's really what he's saying. Uh, thank you so much. Um, we've run out of time, uh, but we didn't invite them here just for the panels. Uh, please interact with them. We're going into a break, uh, have a chat, you know, learn more. Uh, their boots are here as well. Learn more about the products that they have for you as SMEs. Uh, but thank you so much, and I'm sure we will all be engaging you as we go along to make sure that we deepen this SME conversation and create the success stories that you're talking about. Please give them a hand as we thank wind up. Thank you very up. much. Yeah, and have a good day.